It's time for another show, guys! Hey guys, welcome back. So yeah, that time's come again. Another Koi show to attend. I wasn't going to be attending this one. Um, but I've managed to wingle my way into it. It's going to cost me a few quid like to get missus to go shopping. But that's no problem. Um, I managed to wingle Miss N a lift down to the show We are Kyle and Knott's Ripper. So we're going we're gonna to fly down to um, Detlin about half seven something like that tomorrow morning and there's just a few things that I need to get done today um, I usually carry out me all my maintenance on a Sunday um, but because we're going to the show tomorrow that's not going to happen because we're probably going to end up getting back um, pretty late so I'm going to have to get my maintenance done today I'm going to have to get on with it pretty soon because I've got stuff to get to do later on. Um, been to price a job up this morning, and then tomorrow uh, later on, I've got to nip into town. Mrs. wants to get a few bits. I want to go and get me wig cut. Um, yeah, it's ready. Get beard trimmed and all, I reckon. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, bit of maintenance to get done. Um, also, I want to mention. Um, you guys on my last video on my giveaway um, hopefully everyone's received all the prizes if anyone if anybody hasn't received their prize then make sure you get in touch with me and I'll try and find out what's happening you should have all received them by now um, so yeah I'm gonna get cracked on with this maintenance um, and I'll show you what I do um, when I'm doing my maintenance the first thing I always do is make sure my water's fine. So I'm gonna do that now and we'll come back. Right then guys. So I'm gonna be carrying out me ammonia test first. Got me me Hannah tester for me ammonia and me syringe I've got filled up. I'll just give that a rinse out first. You know how to do water tests. I'm not gonna teach you how to suck eggs but I always do my water test first. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all these tests um, I'm not going to be able to use me my HANA test for my nitrite because I need to get some, some more reagents for that I'll probably pick some of them up at show but I'm going to go through all my tests and then we'll come back and check what results are right, I'm just testing my salt level now before this gets diluted it's already been diluted a couple of times so so it's now at 0.25 bit looks of it 0 0.26, 0 0.25 0.25 so that's going to be getting diluted again today with an, with the ten percent water change. So that's that one. Another thing as well, guys, is after you've finished using your salt meter, soak it in some tap water for a little while, just to clean any salinity off the off the sensing probes. Otherwise, you'll find it'll start to get white bits on it and probably make it not as accurate so 
just clean it in some tap water let it soak a bit right, the next one I do is my pH test see what we've got here should be sat somewhere around 8 I think I think it's safe to say, yeah, 8, I'll take that as 8. Still, it fluctuates slightly, but it looks as though that's pretty much set bang on 8, pretty much. 8.01, I'm going to take that just as 8. Do, the, do that as well with this, guys. Um, once you finish using this, again, I do the same. I'll just rinse it off in some tap water just a clean probe and then I'll clean it in um, some of the pH, pH4 solution and then it'll get dried off and put away for storage right so here's the end of the test guys so we've got 0.12 ammonia um, nitrite again I had to do that with my liquid tester so that's sh that's showing us zero nitrate 20 pH 8 and my KH 5 so everything's looking nice and solid no problems there with anything um, everything's looking good inside here everything's looking nice in there, got a nice roll going on, nice colour to media and um, what I'm actually going to be doing over the winter oh, winter? over the winter is making a bigger moving bed um, I'm going to build build a new one um, so I can accommodate for more media um, I'm actually going to make it out of timber um, and then line it with fiberglass it's probably going to be it's going to be the same depth or maybe just maybe a bit deeper might come to about here but the length of it is going to come to I don't know probably somewhere about here so it's probably going to be about not far off double the size I'd have thought um, so I should be able to get probably somewhere in the region of 150 litres in it once it's done well, like I say, it's going to be a winter project. I'm looking forward to doing it. It's going to give me something to do over winter. So, yeah, should be good. Good fun. Well, yeah, it's working a treat, all that. Awesome. So, what my plan is now, guys, is before I start doing a watch change, I'm going to flush my drain and um, get it flushed through a couple of times. Um, and then I'm going to get this pond drain in. The way I have to do it, because I've got no drains up this end of the garden, is I have to run like an inch and a half flexi hose all the way down to the bottom of the garden into the manhole. So um, that's what I'm going to do. And I shall get this drum emptying so I can purge my drain a couple of times. Right, so this is where I drain my drum from, guys. Naturally, first, what I have to do is switch my system off so I'll get that shut off for everything um, before it kicks float switch in once it's draining and then I shut my valve off to my moving bed I shut my drum the um, line off to the bottom drain so we'll get that shut off Put this pipe on the end of here. It's not. I have to hold it on because this pipe's not. Uh, this is only um, inch. This I could do again another valve so I can connect it on properly. Really, 
and then I literally just open this wall valve up and let it go until the drum's empty. So I'll just let that go. Right, that's now empty guys. So now all I do is let it back into my filter, into my, um, into my drum, bottom wing, bottom drain valve. And once it's full, I shut it back off. Let it go again. Not a lot in there to be honest with you. Not a lot of muck. One thing I will be doing this time as well is the waste chute needs needs a good scrub down, so I'll be doing that. Right, so that's emptied again now guys, so all I do now is once again open the drain line and then just leave it and then I'll start doing my 10% change. I'll let that fill back up and then this gets swapped over to the drain valve at the side of the moving bed filter. So where's the drain valve? This is where I do and then my water change where I empty the water out. So it's just a ball valve there, and then this hose just literally goes on this outlet on here. That goes there. Back up. and then literally just let it go and then I know when I finish my 10% water change because on the pond itself I have got two waterline marks I don't know how well you, these will show up or you can see them right so this mark here that is the full waterline and then this one down here is the 20% mark. So when the water line is in between them two, that's my 10%. Once the water line starts dropping below the skimmer, then that skimmer pump will get turned off. I leave me, I leave me air lines running. Might get window clean as well, although it's not too bad because obviously we coming out of summer now, coming into autumn, so the algae build build ups not as great. And um, the UV is turned off now too. So that's not on. So that's one bit of electricity we're saving now. So now it's just a matter of waiting for that to drain. Just while that's draining guys, I'll just show you this as well, um, what my skimmer cage catches. So this is all I've got on my skimmer to my shower, I ain't got a filter in between it. Um, I just rely on this cage. And like I said, I said before, very rarely do I get any crap on my surface. And this is what it catches, what it stops going into my shower. And all I do when I do my pond maintenance just give that a rinse off and Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt
ready to rock and roll again. And like I say guys, I know um, most people say to have some sort of filter between your skimmer and your shower but I don't get crap on my surface really. Um, and also I'm pumping quite a lot of water over my shower so anything what does manage to make it into my shower just gets broken up into small pieces anyway with the amount of flow that goes over it so what's that? ready to rock and roll again I'm right, just waiting finish for this to drain down now it's not got much more to go so we'll be back with you in a bit guys Right, we're down at the 10% mark guys, so here's his 10% just in between these two marks, so we'll get that shut off now. That's that, and then we get it filling back up. Now obviously I don't turn any pumps back on until it's um, refilled, so this hose goes on this tap here. on there and then that baby goes on now obviously the water is flowing through that um, three stage filter but to be quite honest with you well I'll not be so hard when it's flowing through at this rate it doesn't remove that much chlorine when it's running through it slowly it does a pretty good job to be honest with you but as this is at the moment it's running I'll just show you so over there, where it's topping back up, it's running through, I'd say, that looking at that, it's probably a rate of about 7 litres a minute, that. So to top this back up now, it's going to take just over a couple of hours to top this back up. So I'll leave my air on, um, no pumps running, so nothing's running through my filter system or anything like that. Once it's topped back up, I will then um, add a dose of sodium thiosulfate, leave it for half hour or so, and then switch everything back on. And that has been working a treat. Each time I've done my tests, I've not been getting no chlorine readings. I mean, I'm quite lucky to be able to do it that way because my system doesn't contain any chloramines. So, in that respect, come back. That's it. So in that respect, I'm lucky in that regard, and um, where I don't have to worry about chloramines. So I can literally just blast it through, tap, um, and just add a dose of sodium thiosulfate. Um, I, I can't be doing with pissing about with big blues to be honest with you. Can't be doing with. It. I see people having more troubles with them. Uh, I just can't be doing so yeah I just use the liquid dechlorinator um, yeah and it's it's worked absolutely fine for me so I'm gonna let that fill back up now guys like I say it should only take just over a couple of hours to fill up in fact guys you know what we won't guess on that we'll actually find out how fast it's flowing through and see how long it's gonna to take to fill up with this so this is my flow cup so we'll get around there and we'll see how fast it's coming through Right then guys, Let's see what we've got. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that. But that is... litres a minute that guys get this back in its holster so yeah about 12 litres a minute so in actual fact 
we're looking at something like an hour and 20 minutes to fill back up which ain't too bad really also guys I want to give a massive shout out to Lee at Ramsey DIY Koi Pond I know he's a little bit of a weirdo which stuff he eats but nevertheless thank you very much my mucker for sending me that up beautiful much appreciated that that's going to sit on shelf with other two so then there was three so that's my maintenance guys that's what I do every week um, for now that's it so I'll catch back with you guys tomorrow at the All England the northerners are coming dragging us knuckles <laughs> see you in a bit